It's amazing to see uh, as I go to each major city and you, you talk to people in certain cultures and the, the number of ayahuasca ceremonies that are going on in all these cities, you know, in, even in North America, um, is, it's, it's startling and, I'm, and it's also pleasing to me. Well, anybody who knows my work with Thrive knows that my deepest passion is individual freedom for everyone on the planet. I think it's the only way out. Um, and, uh, and part of that on the social level is legalization of drugs. Uh, taking drugs is a victimless crime. Nobody is violating anyone else. If they do, that's a whole other thing that needs to be punished and mitigated in all sorts of, of ways. The theoretical status of Schedule One is that there's no known medical use for a substance, and that's how it ends up on Schedule One. That there's no conceivable medical use for this. So there's no reason why there should be research on the substance. No reason why doctors should have access to it. Uh, so it's the most restrictive of the federal schedule. Societies that do legalize. Uh, various drugs, we, we're seeing again and again that not only do the prisons begin to empty because so many people are in there for victimless crimes, but also there's, um, there's a sense of, of personal responsibility and of uh, freedom to actually learn on your own. Well, I think these uh, movements toward the decriminalization of plant medicines are really important, you know, because if that happens, then Ideally, every community, every small town in the United States, for example, or anywhere, could have a community center where people go to have these experiences with plant medicine. I think that the tide is turning. You know, the Union de Vegetal, you know, was granted um, an exemption by the U.S. Supreme Court. The Santo Daime was granted um, an exemption in Oregon. Um, there's a Santo Daime church here in California that literally called up the DEA and said, you know, I'm serving the Daime, which is what they call ayahuasca. I want you to come and like check it out and give me an exemption. The churches are a great start. Uh, so there's a Supreme Court decision, obviously, uh, authorizing uh, ayahuasca consumption within that religious context there uh, for established religions. So that, 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 that precedent is already there. So the federal government already recognizes that, yes, ayahuasca is a sacrament for some people. It doesn't make possession of DMT, which is a Schedule One substance, legal. What it does is it says, okay, you have a right to practice. The difficulty with that model, and there's always a difficulty here, is that the, 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 the that is an organized religion model uh, for handling ayahuasca as a sacrament, like the peyote is in the peyote churches. And again, when you look at the use of it in Peru, it's not necessarily an organized religious context. There are healing centers throughout Peru, for example, that are essentially ayahuasca clinics. What I think should happen is just simple decriminalization and then licensing of treatment centers like we have in Peru. They won't look like clinics, they'll look like spas. You know, places you can go to have the medicine, but also learn about nutrition, learn about yoga, learn about health and how to maintain good, health and mind and body. It requires skill and expertise to administer ayahuasca, but it's not a, um, a treatment modality exactly like going to the hospital or a religious experience exactly like going to the Catholic Church. It's its own thing. Um, and I think it's possible to have legalization of that of that model, because again, we're talking about a substance that doesn't have a known fatality in the United States. It's not a party drug, it's not chemically addictive, so it's got a lot going for it. Cognitive liberty, period, paragraph, the end, is like the ultimate, because I don't feel like somebody has the right to say to me, um, only if you join this church do you have the right to cognitive liberty or your spiritual expression, because again, that's really burdensome, but we're not there. But I think through demonstrating um, that there are plants and practices that support our health and wholeness um, through the avenues of the, you know, of spiritual practices will go a long way in allowing us to reclaim our capacity for um, autonomy 
in our spiritual expression. I strongly believe that, that we're moving toward individual sovereignty on every level and part of that will be the legalization of particularly drugs that in actually in, in enhance your consciousness. And I shouldn't even say drugs because I don't want to confuse it with stuff that somebody cooks up in their kitchen as opposed to a plant which people have been ingesting you know, successfully for thousands of years. So I think that that's going to happen. And in the process, um, amongst many other benefits, I think that, that it's one of the answers to the opioid crisis that we're facing. A lot of Marines um, were here in Palm Springs, California, and I'm near the 29 Palms uh, Marine Base. And I get a lot of clients who have PTSD, a lot of people who've got really serious emotional problems from trauma. And, and these are the these are the, the, the most impressive young men in the world. I mean, these Marines are smart, competent, physically fit, brilliant young men. And then they often will come back from combat experiences incapacitated. But if you did a CAT scan, if you looked at their body, they look fine but something's not functioning here. And so I got excited about uh, ayahuasca as a treatment uh, possibility for PTSD um, at a professional level. So I'm interested in these different modalities because uh, I very often would have over the last decade uh, working in this area, have Marines go with PTSD and then just get strung out on pills. Essentially, they would get uh, uh, put on medications that uh, created more problems uh, than solved problems. I would say the vast majority of the opioid ex uh, ep uh, epidemic is people who are trying to get away from a different type of pain. And it's the pain of being separated from your own soul. It's the source of virtually every addiction. Uh, and addiction never solves the problem. So with things like ayahuasca, which can, and other plant medicines, which can actually naturally put you back in touch with your purpose in life, your value, your, the, the, uh, the, the validity of your emotional process and your mental process, the validity of communicating fully with the people that you may be out of sorts in, in relationship with, all those levels of, of healing are what I think will get to and actually resolve the kind of pain that people are trying to run from with, with taking opioids voluntarily. Ayahuasca is teaching us how to have a relationship with this medicine on the global scale, which has never happened before. But the community of sentient species, the mind of Gaia, recognizes that this is what has to happen. We can't make the changes we're going to have to make in the way we impact uh, this planet unless there's a global shift in consciousness. We have to change our minds before we can change the rest of it. And ayahuasca is the catalyst for that. These, these psychedelics are the catalyst for bringing about that change.